Open Door. My name is Harvey Williams, and I've been blessed to be one of the deacons here at Open Door. Uh, my family and I have been going to church here about four to five years. I like to always start my day by giving thanks to God for all the good things that he's done for us and knowing that he's, al he's always with us all the time. I've already been warned to uh, not do a sermon today. My wife told me to just do uh, my testimony and give the pastor time enough to do the sermon. So I just want to let you know how God has worked in my life as I've been, uh, as I was growing up. I am a dot. I'm an original dot, born and raised right here in Wyandotte County. And uh, I'm just blessed to be a part of this community. I'm blessed to be a part of, of this church. Uh, my uh, grandmother and mother both came from Mississippi here right after the war, and they settled right here in Wyandotte County. My dad came from East Texas, and he settled here in Wyandotte County about the same time as my mom and my grandmother did. My mom and dad were married and were blessed with six children, which I am the oldest one. I grew up in the church. I mean, I was at all the church services. I went to Sunday school. I went to choir practice. My mom made sure that we were always in church participating in one of the programs that was there. Uh, we went in the evening time. We, we would go all day sometime on Sundays. Always, my mom uh, was a praying mom. She just didn't talk the talk. She walked the walk also. I know many nights I would walk past her room and I would see her on her knees praying. And I could hear her praying for her children, her husband, her family. And then when she was finished, she would always get up and come in our room and make sure that she kneeled down to pray with us also. I looked up to my dad. My dad was very important in my life. He, um, he was a hard worker. He worked at a foundry. And I would see him come home in the evening time and he would be sweaty and, and dirty and plus he, would, he worked hard. And I always admired him uh, because he, he took good care of us and, and, and as he worked real hard. And, uh, uh, but one day the foundry that he worked at burned down and he was out of a job for quite a while. My, my, my dad didn't have a very much of an education. So being a, a African-American and uh, not having very much of an education, it was very hard for him to find a job. So he went quite a while without a job. So I remember him and I had went down to get some assistance just some help until he was able to find a job. And uh, when we had got down there, the guy looked at him and he said, you look like a big scrapping guy. He said, I'm not going to give you any assistance. I'm sure you could find something to do. Even as a young guy, I was stunned. I was stunned. And I thought my dad, I said, man, my dad's going to really give him a good talking to. But he did. He looked at me, we turned around, and we walked out of there. And right at that time, I, my, from that day on, I just said, you know, nobody's never going to talk to me like that. It angered me. It hurt me. And so I just said to myself, you know, I'm, I'm just going to work with my dad. We're just going to go on and do what we need to do. And my dad got some lawnmowers. And during the day, we would cut grass. 
if he put sideboards on the side of his pickup and in the evening time we would go uh pick up trash over in, at some uh, apartment buildings over in, in in Missouri there but all the time while we were struggling I, we were blessed people did come and help us out they would give us food and things that we needed to kind of help us get through uh, the tough time that we was going through and uh, I remember my mom would have us at the dinner table and she would say um, we would say mom what are we having for dinner tonight and she say hush puppy and we'd say hush puppy what's hush puppy and she said you guys are little puppies what I'm giving you, you hush and eat it. And so it's going to be called Hush Puppies. We end up eating a lot of Hush Puppies for a while there. But that's all right. We didn't starve. Uh, we made it the best we could. But, you know, my mom never got upset. She never, I never showed, she never showed that, uh, uh, that, that we wasn't going to make it because she believed in the power of prayer. And I remember a guy that lived around the corner from us. He was just an acquaintance. And he came over to my house one time, and he told my dad, he said, I might have a job for you. And he said, because I'm, I'm uh, being uh, transferred to another place, so I may have a job for you. So uh, fill out this application, and my mom helped him fill it out. And the job was for TWA. And my dad got a job at TWA. At that time, it was a, a pretty good job on the janitorial service. And he ended up staying there until he retired. I started out, I worked, I worked, I just worked as hard as I could. Sometimes I would work as many jobs as I could. So that I didn't get, uh, so I wouldn't feel I'm uh, being in a position that one, that my dad was in. But while I, but when I had time, I would go to the youth groups because I had a youth group at uh at the church I went to, and I remember that on Fridays I enjoyed Friday evenings we would go to the youth group and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going to the youth group, and uh, the. The youth pastor, he came by, he drove by my house, and he said, uh, he looked at me, I'm ready to go, because he, he, he would give us all a ride. And I said, um, are you ready? He said, are you ready? And I said, uh, yes, I'm ready. And he said, I don't have room for you in the car. And all the kids that were in there said, yeah, we got room, we got room. We'll scoot over and make room for him. But he said, no, I don't have room. He said, do you have a bicycle? And I said, yes. He said, would you ride your bicycle down there and we'll meet you down there? And he drove off. All the other kids were still saying, we got room for him. He could get in here. But he drove, he kept going. And I never forgot about that. And I stopped going to church. I didn't go to church anymore. Now my mom could have made me go to church because I was still under their roof, but she didn't. She didn't make me go. I guess she said, you know, this is this is this is part of your journey, what you're gonna have to do. So I stopped going uh, to church. If I could work, find somewhere to work on Sunday, I would work. I remember one Sunday in the afternoon, a place not too far from us on Sundays, they would have a teen dance. And uh, they would let the young people come in for a little while and they could dance and socialize together. And while I was there, I went with a couple of friends and I met this late, this girl, because we were real, we were still young, 16, 17 years old. I saw this girl standing over there in the corner, and and she was pretty, and her and her cousin, her cousin was pretty too, but she was prettier. 
And I said, I'm going to go over there and talk to her. I do not know. I'm, I'm normally a little shy when doing that. So, but I went over there and I went over there and I asked her, I said, would you dance with me? And she looked at me and she said, no, because I saw you and you can't dance. And I don't know why it came out of my mouth. I don't know what made me say it, but I said, I love you. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to spend my life with you. And I just met her. And she looked at me like, I, this guy got issues. But guess what? We've been together over 52 years. And I can dance, so I think I won that one. Anyway, we get, we end up getting married, raising three children, but I, re, I the, the deal that happened with my dad, I still remember that, and I said, now I have a family. And I said, that's not gonna happen to me. Nobody's gonna talk like that to me. And right to this day, I still struggle with that. God has to sometimes tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, I, I, I got this. I got this. So I have to, even at 55, 56 years later, I have to remember that God is still in control. But in the meantime, I just kept working. I, I, I just figured that uh, the more money I made, the better off my family was going to be, and we would not be in that shape. But I looked at it the wrong way. Because during that time, I missed a bunch of recitals. I missed a bunch of graduations. I missed a bunch of football games. I missed a bunch of things that I could have did with the kids. My wife had to end up doing all of them. And sometimes the kids remind me of it too, that, uh, uh, that I missed that. So I make sure that I don't miss any of them with my grandchildren. Uh, I remember that uh, it's still at this time I wasn't going to church, but I was working with a guy that was a new born again Christian. And him and I were talking and we got to talk every day. And I got to see how excited he was about the Lord and, and how the Lord was working in his life and how the Lord was working with his family. And I remember that it just... One day, I just remember what my mom had talked to me about in the prayer she had said. And it was like, Jesus was just saying, come home. Kind of like the prodigal son, come home. It was a church around the corner from our house. I decided that this Sunday, my wife, my kids, we're going to start back to church. We're going to start back to going to the house of the Lord. We went back, and we went back for um, a long time, but I still hadn't committed my life to the Lord. So I remember one day I was at the back of the church. It was an Easter Sunday, and God touched my heart, and I said, I'm going to give my heart to him. And they played the song, Come home, come home, ye who are weary come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sinners, come home. I touched my heart, and from that day on, I started uh, uh, devoting myself to the Lord, And uh, but still, I struggle. I, you know, just, I think a lot of people think when you become a new Christian that you don't you don't struggle, but I struggled, and I struggled with the one thing that that was uh, uh, that I've been dealing with all my life, and that was financial. And I heard a sermon one Sunday where uh, where the the pastor said uh, talked about tithing, and tithing. I my bills were so that. I didn't have any hardly any money left over. So if I put five dollars in there, 
ten dollars in there. I was doing pretty good. I thought if I had a real good week, I'd put twenty in there, and I thought that was good. But God was telling me through the sermon that put your trust in me. Put your trust in me, and I'm like, I, I, if I do, we're gonna lose something. We're gonna lose something. But God was saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me? And I did it. I did. I, I started tithing from that day. And you know, I never lost nothing. Nothing ever been turned off. And I've been blessed every day since then. So I, I'm, uh, so I'm, uh, the, I, Remember now that God is always working with us. He never leaves us. And my favorite passage in the Bible comes from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your, all, your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And that has been my testimony all through my, all through my life that God is working with, God is constantly working with me. He's showing me something new every day. And so, and I still have struggles every day. So I thank you for your time and God bless you.